Unfortunately, when we were taking this hub off, we were stupid enough to bash the end of it with a hammer. What's happening is this edge here is just has just been flattened where we hit it with a hammer and it's touching the threads now, meaning that this isn't screwing on properly. So we've just got to try and thin out ever so slightly with a carbide burr without touching the threads. Okay, I think we managed to get away with it. We've, this is the new um, nut from the uh, Febby bearing kit. 08840. And um, obviously one of the differences between the new nut and the old nut is when you've got it at the right torque, what you're supposed to do is just bash a little indentation in here and here. You can see on that nut there, and that stops the nut coming undone. So we don't need to get a new hub and we don't need to recut the threads, which is good news. I'm just waiting for a special tool to get this bearing and this ring here off. Um, but meanwhile, maybe I'll just put this whole hub in a rust bath, see if we can bring that back to metal and get rid of all of the rust. Won't do any harm. Okay, that's our usual solution of built amber deoxy crystals. We're going to just put the wheel hub in there. These have come out much better than expected from the rust bath. They're almost like new. We're just going to cover them in, in a um, layer of oil just to stop them rusting, tarnishing. These spacer wings here just come straight off. Uh, not with one hand, you've got to take them off exactly straight. There you go. And the idea is, as you tighten down the end nut here, that with the other bearing in there, um, you can adjust the amount of play and movement to exactly what it needs to be. And what happens is this ring here gets crushed. It's a one-time use ring. So when you're tightening up this nut, um, you can't basically go back and loosen it. You would have to get a new ring if you over tighten it and crush that too much. So you can see this here is the new ring here. And uh, it's just fractionally, maybe a quarter of a millimeter, half a millimeter thicker this way than the old one, which means this has just been crushed ever so slightly just to um, adjust the distance between the two bearings. Just arrived in the post is the tool, which I hope is the one that we need to pull this bearing off the hub. There we go. The idea is that this here fits around the bottom of here and you basically wind something up to pull it off. So let's give that a go and see if it works. Okay, so it's very important that you put something like a socket that sits exactly inside here. Okay, not on the edges, because these edges are quite thin inside. Now we're going to use this little fitting here that came with the brake rotor puller to put on there. Okay, now the theory is when you screw this down, like so, it should pull the bearing up. So let's try that. Spacer wings aren't usually on that tight, but if you can't get it off, you can use the same tool just to whiz it off. That is how you get the tapered bearing off the hub. Just using a cheap and cheerful bearing puller that we got from eBay. I'll put a link to where we got this kit from. That pulls the bearing and also the spacer wing off. We can now tidy this here up and um, set about putting the new bearing on. This is <clears throat> the old bearing which we haven't removed yet and you'll see that there is a gap here not least because this moves slightly but even when that's pushed down all the way there's a gap of about one and a half mil there's two reasons for that one is because this 
edge here is slightly higher than this edge here. There's a slight step down. And the second reason is that the bearing itself has a ridge, i.e. this bit here is higher than this bit. So basically when this goes down, you're gonna expect to see a gap between that and that, just like that gap there. So when you're tapping it in, don't expect that to be flush against the bottom. This is a section out of the Mercedes um, manual 35-130 removal and installation of rear axle flange adjustment of bearings. And what you will notice is there are two types of bearing depending on the age of the car. And the difference is on the actual hub. One hub is tapered up here and one isn't. I don't know how well this will come out on video, but on this hub that came out, it is a, um, a rounded corner here. It's not a perfect 90 degree. And if we look at the bearing that came off the car and it has a perfectly round, smooth inner edge here with just a small flat edge. Okay, so it fits perfectly onto here. This is the new bearing that we've got, whether you'll be able to see this or not. And you can see it actually has a slight ridge just here. So it's not perfectly rounded like the old bearing. And I wonder if that may cause fitment issues. And also the flat ridge here is actually wider than the, f than the one that came off the bearing. And that might just mean that when it comes to seating this bearing down here, it doesn't sit completely flush. Before you put the new bearing on here, make sure that you clean up any old rust. And we're just gonna use a scouring pad here. You don't want to use anything that's gonna score this surface. This surface has to remain flat, but a scouring pad will get that old rust off both here and here. When you come to put everything back together, you're going to be faced with the dilemma of how to get this new bearing on the hub. Um, the way a garage would do it, they'd use a hydraulic press and just put a ring over here and then press that down, which is the correct way to do it. If you don't happen to have a hydraulic press, another way to do it is to use a piece of scaffolding pipe. UK scaffolding pipe. Now the scaffolding pipe doesn't get past that lip so if you want to use the scaffolding pipe method you're going to have to use both old bearings on top of each other and then tap that down. Now it's not unknown for people to actually tap this bearing on using a chisel by tapping the inside edge of the bearing here, never the outside, the inside edge, edge and just going around tap 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 tap. Um, it's quite possible to do that but there is a risk that you end up either scoring the hub or slipping and damaging the bearing. So by all means, give that a go. That has worked for some people, but we're not gonna do that because we don't wanna risk damaging either the hub or the bearing. The method that I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna get a special tool that allows you to pull this bearing on. So basically there's gonna be a tube here and we're gonna pull that tube through the hub and then basically pull that on and that's going to allow us to also get the other bearing in as well without having to be bashing around with a hammer because the, once you've got that in there like so you're going to be faced with how to get the inner bearing on this one here okay and what we're going to do is we're going to use a puller to pull that on i'm going to leave this video here you can see that we've got the subframe back from the powder coaters very nice it looks too um i'm gonna do a separate video on how to install the hub into the control arm and that will include how to get the bearing on here how to tap in the races to put on the outer oil seals how to do the inner bearings and races oil seals thrust washer and also how to torque this up and tighten this up to exactly the right um, level so that the movement is exactly within the tolerances set in the manual 
And then the final video we'll do is how to install this entire subframe, sway bar, springs, degree of diff, etc., back on the car. We bought this um, bearing puller here from eBay. It costs us just £23.50 from these guys here, Hippo Product. Arrived in super quick time as well.